What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Excuse the delay in the videos over the last few days, but uh, today I have something special for you. We have my good friend Ben of the Beard Guys playing on his PS4 account, and uh, he gave me this replay of him having an absolutely monstrous game in the E75 on Arctic region. Now he is top tier in this matchup and as you guys are probably well aware the E75 when top tier like this can just pull out some of the most ridiculous games that you'll ever have. It's just such a powerhouse so good at carrying games like this and that is exactly what Ben managed to achieve. So he's pushing down into the valley here on Arctic region and a place where I would expect the heavy tanks to go on this map, especially when there's no artillery. So he is going to go and hold the corner down at sort of H8 kind of area, or H9. And just as he's moving across, a hammer lights him up. But like I said, there's no artillery in this match, so he's not going to be in any danger. There's another hammer in the middle trying to get onto the rocks, but Ben does manage to get a shot into him. Which damages his ammo rack, which is always nice to do with your first shot of the game. Unfortunately, it didn't detonate for him. But now the other hammer is poking out just a little too much. And the 128mm gun on the E75 does not mess around. So even though the hammer is at quite a bit of an angle there, the AP rounds are still going to go right through. It's just ridiculous penetration. So he takes out... The first hammer swiftly and cruelly. I don't even know if that's a word, cruelly, but you guys know what I'm saying. So he's taking a shot at the second hammer here. Unfortunately, that one does ricochet off of the turret roof. And now he has to deal... Oh, I say he has to deal. Now he has to uh, deal with the annoyance of the M25 or MT25 being right there. The T28 prototype bounces and Ben gets a nice shot for 502 through his rubbish side armor. Not really a spot that you'd really want to be in in a T28 prototype. I kind of would have expected him to hang back and be in the base area. Ben gets another penetration before the 5100 finishes the T28 prototype off. Now he's pushing around the corner. There's a KV-4 producing the side of his turret. Ben takes the time to aim and gets a lovely shot through the side of the KV-4's turret for a nice roll of 492. The T-10, doing his job as a tier 9 heavy on Arctic region, is camping the base. <laughs> Just like you would expect the enemy team to be doing. Or uh, more so probably the friendly team. But that's a nice penetration right there from Ben. Most likely penetrated the KV-4's fuel tanks and set him on fire before he can put it out and then he finishes him off with another shot so he's up to 13 hits of damage so far including the few clicks from the fire as well as two kills nine critical hits and six assisted hits from him lighting targets up the t10 not playing aggressively at all for some reason kind of would have expected him to be the opposite where Ben was. Although, you know, you can excuse the T-10 for not having the best armor. Unfortunately, Ben's shots there just goes a little bit left from where he wanted it to go and bounces off the T-10's upper plate instead of going through. But he's going to get a nice shot through the rear of this 1375's turret and not taking any retaliation from him. The stirrer Emil pokes over the ridge and fires, but Ben is now aiming at the T-10 and swiftly puts around through the side of his armor. So now the 1375 is exposing himself just a little bit too much and Ben can take advantage of that and he gets a shot through the side taking him out as well taking him up to three kills and 16 hits of damage. Now he wants to push over so he can get a shot into the Sturo mill. Is he going to bounce the return? Yes he is because the E75's armor when played correctly and angled like this is just ridiculous. Also, the T-10 is firing high explosive. So congratulations to that guy for 
sitting at the back of the base and spewing high explosive for the match. Ben just YOLOs over the hill. He knows he's got the HP to take the hit from the Sturro Mill. Unfortunately, his auto-aimed shot does derp into the ground. But now angling correctly, he bounces the shot from the Sturro. And should be able to finish him off. Ooh, he just managed to escape. Lucky, lucky Sturro Mill. But now he's going to aim for the Type 59. A tight shot on the turret, but he did unfortunately miss. The E-75's gun is a German gun. But it's not the most accurate it's not, you know, it's, not, it, it's good, you know, it's, it is definitely good, but it's not like the trademark German gun where you can just point and click and get the penetration that you're after. So the Sturo Mill goes down to the Lycan, the friendly Lycan, and there are still six enemy tanks remaining at this point, with Ben already being on 18 hits of damage, so he has had a fantastic game so far. But he wants to pull more damage out of the bag. So another enemy gets taken down. Now there are only five. He should have a shot on the IS-3 right here. Hopefully the IS-3 is not going to move. He takes the time to aim. Leads the shot. But like I said, the E-75's gun isn't too reliable at range. And that shot derps a little bit too low. And doesn't go exactly where he wants it to. The T-10 just manages to escape as Ben reloads. But now he decides to, to pop back up for some reason. But Ben does get a spotted target assist on him before bouncing a shot from the Panther right there. Although his tracks did eat the damage. So that would count as a penetration for the Panther, I do believe. It's not a shot that he bounced. It's a shot that his tracks ate the damage of. And therefore he received no damage instead. So... He is going to move around to the base, but as he does so, the T-10 fires a HE round, which hits the floor and does damage to Ben. I don't think that hit, I don't think that actually hit his armor. The splash damage did a little bit of damage to Ben's rear armor from where that shot hit the floor. Again, kudos to the T-10. You know, the logic is real, ladies and gentlemen. HE rounds do indeed do the most damage, but they are not going to pen an E-75 from any angle. Even if you hit an E-75 in the rear, that's not going to go through. I think the only thing that could penetrate an E-75 with HE is probably a Chieftain. And that would have to be from the rear. Maybe even from the side. But don't quote me on that. Because the Chieftain's HE is indeed Hesh which has more penetration than your standard HE round. The Panther pokes around, and Ben gets a nice shot into him. Unfortunately, a low roll for 465. And now he's just waiting for the IS-3 to creep around as well. Of course, the Centurion 7-1 with its 210 millimeters of penetration head rounds could potentially go through as well. Ben does manage to get a penetration into the IS-3, taking a shot in return which only hits tracks that one looks as if it looks as if this is3 is firing he as well so everybody on the enemy team is firing he because he rounds do the most damage ladies and gentlemen so you should be firing them of course you should be firing the round that does the most damage and not the round that is actually going to penetrate the tank and still do damage anyway instead of just hitting an e75 for like 20 damage so Ben takes a shot at the turret roof of the IS-3, which is a weak point, but like I said, the E-75's gun can be unreliable at times. So while he's reloading, the IS-3 chips away at him with his 122mm HE round, not doing too much damage in the process. Now it's at this point that I imagine Ben would be pushing up on the IS-3, because the T-10 is sat way back at the base. And probably isn't going to be able to do anything. But Ben's going to take a go shot at him. You just saw the tracer there. And that round did in fact hit the T-10. Because you didn't see the splash of it hitting the terrain in the background. That must have hit the T-10. But it didn't do any damage to him. The Carnarvon is pushing up on the IS-3. And does manage to secure the kill. Just before Ben was reloaded. And he couldn't get the shot into the IS-3. In time 
to secure the kill but they know where the t10 is and at this point he's on 20 hits of damage three kills 10 critical hits and seven assisted ribbons as well so he has had had he has had an absolutely fantastic game in the e75 and barely taken any damage in return as well proving that this really is the powerhouse of tier 9 I mean these days I really do think the Conqueror can rival the E75 and okay not so much in terms of armor but the buff that the Conqueror received to its turret and the DPM that the Conqueror has with the absolutely amazing just incredible 120 millimeter gun that the Conqueror has it really does give the E75 a run for its money and when played correctly it's just incredible can most definitely rival the E75 for best tier 9 heavy at this stage in the game in my opinion of course you guys may disagree with me or you may agree with me if you do you know feel free to voice your opinion in the comments section the T10 pokes out Ben gets a nice auto aim into the T10 for 545 and he's looking to secure the kill right now the T10 doesn't appear as if he's going to expose himself to let Ben get the kill. So it looks as if he's going to have to back up a little and try and get an angle to get the shot away at the T10 and secure his fourth kill, his 22nd hit of damage and the win for his team. Now he's exposing his side armor here, but he knows that the T10 is firing HE, so it doesn't really matter. Unfortunately, that shot does only track the T10 but that is going to keep him in place. It seems he's used his repair kit already, allowing Ben to get the reload and finish him off. And that is the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen. An absolutely fantastic game from Benjamin in the E75. One of my favorite tier nine heavies and just a ridiculous result. 7,721 damage done, 17 penetrations, 1,318 assisted damage, just shy of 2,500 damage blocked. He picked up the high caliber medal, as well as a steel wall and the confederate medal, and a lovely mastery badge to boot as well. Two marks of excellence on the E75, so Ben clearly knows what he's doing with the tank. I think he may have three marks of excellence now since this replay was sent to me, but he may be able to confirm in the comments section. But ladies and gentlemen, if you're not aware of the Beard Guys, do go and check out their channel. I'm sure you are aware of them because they are a very cool group or duo, I should say. But uh, do go and check out their YouTube channel. They post great YouTube content for World of Tanks console, both Xbox and PS4, and you should go and check them out there. Link to their channel will be in the description for this video. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you did have a very fun time watching this video. Until next time, have a good day and peace out.